I'm Rob Lapuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby here with Logan Polish, who co-stars as Dina Fox on Apple TV Plus's dramatic thriller, The Mosquito Coast. Um, Logan, first of all, the audience is dropped into this story without much exposition, and it's keeping us on our toes. We're always guessing as to what the foxes are doing um, on this treacherous journey. So, but Dina is like us. She's still in the dark about what Ali and Margot's motivations and past are all about. So I'm just wondering, firstly, how much are you aware of, um, you know, what is actually going on um, with her parents, with your character's parents? Um, I know, I know pretty much. I mean, I, I, I do like, I'm no, I never get too method in the sense that I, I, where I don't know anything. And I, I, I have read before we went, before they cut down the episodes, because originally we were supposed to go to nine and then COVID, and so they cut it down to seven. I knew where we were going and I, I kind of, I saw sort of what, <laughs> what the parents did. Um, <laughs> and um, that was very stressful. <laughs> Even it almost felt like Dina. I was like, oh no, <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, that's heavy, but I mean, it's always changing. So even, even though I feel like I, I do know what's going on. I mean, we could go, but we could go back for another season and I mean, that could shift, especially with the writing and they're always sort of shifting things here and there. Um, I mean, in a lot of the episodes when we're sort of start cutting between our storyline and their storyline, I did sort of try to not really go into depth of what they were doing. I kind of just tried to stay confused all the time because I wanted to stay in that headspace of sort of being in Mexico and being in our own world and discovering the city on our own with Gabriel. And so me and him actually both sort of did that. We never really, you know, did it. We didn't even, yeah, we never really knew what Justin and Melissa were fully doing. We were always a little bit confused about like what their storyline was, which I think just overall helped. Yeah, absolutely. And um, how, you, how do you feel about the kids uh, not knowing about what was going on and being brought along for the ride on this, you know, treacherous, perilous journey to the Mosquito Coast? Is it, is it difficult to allow the audience to relate to Dina where they don't, where, where she herself is just being brought along for this journey? I mean, yeah, I think it's, I think it is at a certain point quite unfair because they treat these kids. I mean, they specifically treat Dina like an adult at times. And I think the, the, the power between them definitely shifts where Ali treats Dina like, sometimes the adult with how he expects her to just sort of make certain decisions or um, behave. And so I did find, I mean, at times as the season progressed, sort of, I, I, I guess I always questioned, I started to question, wow, why would this, why would these kids continue to follow their parents under these, these circumstances, given that they're kind of giving them nothing to go on? Um, I do think it's really good because she is constantly sort of the voice of reason and is always grounding the audience in the show especially because everyone's sort of up in their head even Charlie is sort of you know looking at his dad as the savior and she's just sort of you know the grounded teen going what the hell is everyone doing um so I think it's great to have that sort of rock throughout the season since everyone's sort of so off their rockers um but I mean yeah she I I, I think Ultimately, she is staying because her dad, I think she, she likes to feel needed by her parents. And I think that's some sort of baggage that she has. And there's this reliance he has on her. And there's this like emotional exchange that she gets. And I think it's sort of like, you never want to leave your child. And it's almost like, since that, that power shift has shifted, it's like, oh, I don't want to leave my you know crazy kid aka dad you know just like um so she kind of is stuck you know between a rock and a hard place i'm so glad you raised that logan because when i watched the full i've seen the whole thing now i i picked up on that too like she is a teenager and she's not just another rebellious teenager because at first when she's in the bed and she's texting whatever i'm like okay this is just gonna maybe be a stock standard rebellious teenager character she's not that we've seen that character before very quickly i realized She's almost matriarchal because Margot and Ali, the parents, 
seem to have divested a lot of that responsibility to her for some reason. She is more mature and they treat her, as you say, like an adult. So how was that? How did that inform the way you're going to actually create her as a person and make her feel authentic? Was there, was there anything going on in your head when you had the script and you're working with Rupert, the director? I guess, I mean, Rupert did a really, he did a fantastic job at sort of, when we sat down initially, he sort of, I mean, in the casting process, he sort of asked me about my own life. He asked what my dynamic was with my parents. And I have a pretty, I mean, my parents never like looked down at me or put me into that child position. So I could definitely pull from that. And so I knew what that was like to sort of, I mean, I'm an only child. So I know what it's like to sort of have your parents come to you for advice or um, have that sort of codependency that they have. Um, but I, I guess for, I guess preparing for it, I just, I kind of, I went to my own life because I have a lot of that sort of maturity. And um, I was, I mean, I homeschooled myself for high school, so I could kind of, I just knew what it was like to be like that. Yeah. Um, I want to think of a particular example, uh, just to drill down a little further into that dynamic. Um, when Ali tells Dina that they're fleeing to Mexico, um, she snaps back at him and says, they're not his family, they're his audience. And I love that line. Um, I found it to be a huge insight, actually. Very simple, simple way of getting some insight into their dynamic. Well, what do you think? I I thought it's, I mean, it's, I love that line because I kind of, I kind of found it very cathartic for you know, to grow, I found it very cathartic in general, just because it's, I think everyone sort of can relate to having a family member that's sort of in the limelight and having to sort of constantly shift around them and, and having that sort of, you know, crazy inventor in the family. I've had many of those in my family. So you're kind of always like, yeah, in a way you are their audience. Um, and I think it kind of sets the tone of, of, it first establishes, okay, this is who, you know, this guy is. And it also just kind of shows that this is what it's going to be like for the rest of the season as we are his audience for the rest of the season. And um, I mean, I love, I, I loved that part. And I loved reading that in the script. That was probably one of my favorite things because it finally sh showed me that, okay, a, this girl's unlike many teens. Um, she has that, you know, maturity and, it's great when when characters can sort of just confront other people like that or can confront other characters and kind of say what the audience is thinking. That's what I always loved about her. She's just always sort of saying what we're thinking. Yeah. And like at any time in the script that I was questioning it or kind of wondering what was going on, she was sort of saying it or kind of bringing it up. And I'm like, okay, great. We're in alignment there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So she... I mean, she really is kind of like the surrogate for us, the viewer, who doesn't know what's happening and looks at Ali suspiciously. But I actually think that her pushing back on her dad, deep down, I get the sense that she's also pushing back on this realisation, perhaps, that she's more like him than she cares to admit. What are your thoughts on that point? I agree. I mean, it's something that Neil brought up to us in the very beginning. He said, he, he always says... Charlie wants to be everything like his father, but he's more like his mother. And Dina wants to be everything, you know, wants to be the furthest from him and is becoming him. And I felt like that was, I mean, the perfect example, the perfect way to put it, because I mean, even with the monologues on the phone, she just, you start to see just those threads of unhinged mania. And, um, I mean, I love it. I, I love that she's, I mean, she probably doesn't, but as a, as a viewer looking out on the outside, I love that she's slowly becoming him. And I, and I love that it's like, you just, you can't kind of deny, you know, your childhood and what, you know, what you've been raised in and how that starts to just come out due to their circumstances. And you can kind of see how they've been programmed and, you know, regardless of how hard she tries to sort of put that to the side and become her own person. It's like, that independence is him, you know, everything she knows is him. So, I mean, I think it's great. It's really fun. Yeah. It's been really it, fun to play. It's it's so interesting because it, it allows us to 
acknowledge that a lot of our parents are in are within us, whether we like it or not. And for a show to do that in such a short amount of time is is pretty remarkable. Uh, Neil did such a great job with um, putting that across to us, the audience. Um, speaking of Ali Fox, obviously played by Justin Thoreau, a lot of us know him from The Leftovers. Um, what are his strengths as number one on the call sheet and as a fellow producer on the project? I mean, he also has a personal connection, as obviously, to his uncle who wrote the novel. But what did you find to be his strengths when he came to set? I mean, I, I, I truly loved working with him so much and I hope we can do it again because he... He really was so good because we had so many scenes together. He was so good at rehearsing with me and also giving me really great feedback on certain takes. Like he would always come to me and be like, oh, maybe we should try this. Or maybe um, since I'm since Dina is sort of becoming her father as the season progresses, he would sort of go through certain monologues with me that I had or lines and go, oh, maybe like, you know, perform it like how I would to just sort of have that alley infused um, chaoticness. And um, he's so good at, I think, I mean, besides that, he's just so good at coming to set and sort of wanting everything to be better. I mean, there were so many things that like lines that he would tweak here and there just to make them about something and make sure that we're always saying something. He always wanted us to be saying something. And so like the whole homeless encampment scene, I remember that shifted over a night because he looked at that and was like, wait, this can be, we could really use this time to be saying something. And he like completely rewrote it. And <laughs> I showed up to set the next day and it was this whole thing about, you know, how we throw people away and it was amazing. So he's always just, he he's really protective of the show and also making everyone look good, which I think is sometimes I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of competitive actors and I'm, I'm always, you know, never, I never know what, what someone's going to be like, but he was always expanding like my part or Melissa's part and making sure that she was coming off as a strong female character. And um, he really went into the writing in a way I didn't expect from an actor. And that's so wonderful for someone like yourself, who's relatively new to the business compared to some of the others on the cast. Um, and speaking of Melissa, that's another um, interesting um, casting choice because I, I kind of understand Ali and I know what he's doing, I think. But with Margot, she's more elusive. And mm -hmm. the perfect casting, I think, was having Melissa, someone like her who is very soft and demure but has this really interesting vulnerability and also um, even tension behind the, her eyes. And I just wonder what it was like to, to act alongside her. She's also got a lot of experience, but in a different way. It was great. I mean, she's got this natural maternal instinct was really nice. Like from the first time I met her, it felt like, oh, I'm protected with, with you. And, and especially, you know, being away. It was my first time being away from home like that in that capacity for work. So it really felt good to have someone that I felt like, oh, she could protect me. But I mean, it was... She, she was, I mean, she was just as great as him in the sense that she also sort of had everyone's back. And I would say, like, Justin was very good at being, like, protective on set, and then she was great off set. So they had this, like, duality of, like, she just could really, um, she's really good at taking care of everyone when we were all making sure everyone was having a fun time and being like, are you good? Are you good? Um, and kind of felt like a mother, mother fox in that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um uh, I want to speak about a couple of uh, other scenes in the show, particularly well, a sequence, really. The se sequence in episode two at the border, um, when when the family uh, encounter the militia men and they're trying to get across into Mexico. Uh, really, I think that's where I realised what this show was going to be. Um, before that, it was uh, like a, a cat and mouse kind of um, a, a action adventure show, but that made it feel like okay, this the stakes are really high. I'm just wondering if you could take us back, we probably shot quite a while ago now, but take us back to the days shooting in the desert and how difficult it was. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was a very, that was a very difficult time. Um, I mean, I don't even know where to start. I mean, the, I think, I think the hardest part is, I mean, there's so many hard parts. I don't even know where to begin, but I mean, it was wild because we, we kind of, 
one in episode one and two had taken so long. So we ended up spending like an extra two weeks there just to do pickups from episode from the first two episodes. So we were a month, we, you know, we spent a month in Mexicali and it was all daylight dependence and it was the winter. So it was like from 5 a.m. to five, you know, every day. And we were like, I think my favorite part of that or the most humorous is that we were so far away from our hotel that we would ch change time zones every day so we would go and then be like oh it's four and then we'd like go back and be like oh no now it's five um yeah. but I mean I loved it because I think it I mean everyone always talks about if there was any sort of um relationship building we did as a family pre shoot shoot and we didn't and I felt like after that month we had really bonded you know in so many ways and I, it really helped the show I think because after that I mean we can't really we can't there's so much that's happened and there's so much that we I mean almost like there's like trauma that we've been through so it really helped sort of experience that and you know bring that into the characters as well because our characters only spend what I mean two days in the desert and we spent a month there so by the end of it I felt like I had maybe experienced a little bit of what they'd gone through <laughs> hopefully it like it amounted to the same amount of time yeah I can't believe you guys were out there for so long. Um, really? uh, like, that's insane. <laughs> like, wow. Um, yeah, Melissa mentioned that she, there was a couple of times where she, was, she, she would grab you and that you'd go and get a bite to eat or you'd take, a, you know, you'd beg, can we please have a day off and go into Palm Springs or something just because it was so challenging. So at least you yeah, had it, it was, um, it definitely felt like, it, it felt like, I mean, it was such a good psychological experiment, like to see like what I remember calling my representation and being like, this is just, I'm having a sense of awareness of like the weird things I'm holding on to. Like I would wait to wash my hair on Friday because they would be putting like so much sand in our hair, so much sand. Like I remember we would take pictures of our showers and be like, it looked like we'd all just gone to the beach because there was so much sand. And I remember being like, that's my reward is like, you get to wash your hair on Friday because it was so hard. And I'm like, just something to hold on to. It's like a weird, weird, like weird habits were getting created under those circumstances. But I kind of became delirious and just started thinking it was really funny. Like there was nothing that hard. I just was like, this is, this is, this is hilarious what we're getting put through right now. Like what the heck is this job? <laughs> I know, right? It was such a great experience and you get to look back and laugh now. You probably weren't yeah. laughing that much at the time. Um, so if and when the show comes back for season two, uh, what, what are your thoughts? Are you looking forward to further exploring the Dina character? I'm, I think I'm really looking forward to sort of seeing I'm first really excited to see hopefully Allie's character become more unhinged more chaotic I think we have the the privilege of having a lot of time to slowly build everyone's sort of craziness unlike the movie that sort of went from zero to ten like in 20 minutes um but I'm looking forward to hopefully Dina there being more more things being said because I, I feel like this, this show is such a good catalyst to say things that people want to hear and like have create that sort of like not aggression but that just that like that adrenaline that you get when you hear someone say something that you've been feeling for a long time and so I hope that we get to do that more and I hope that Dina gets to sort of you know have a build more of like a relationship with her dad like because I always love those moments and I think there are so many good things that are said between them and so much that can be explored mm. so and hopefully the women just end up taking over because I think Charlie and Justin are both I mean they're just they're gonna go I think they're both gonna lose it like I can I can see Gabriel's character really becoming crazy silently so <laughs> hopefully Margot and Dina start to steer the ship a little bit yeah, I'd like to see that. Let's just see the women take over because they're the least unhinged. Uh. Yeah, yeah, they're going to have to because both of the men are just, I mean, like he, I mean, poor Gabriel because I feel like it's it's slow moving, but I mean, the, the joke on the set is that he's like going to just kill everyone because he just is so quiet and silently just brewing that it's just kind of scary to not know what's going on with him because he's 
he's developing so much more. I mean, he's like supposed yeah. to be 12. So we'll see, we'll see yeah. what happens with him. Let's see. That's a powder keg right there. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. So in the meantime, congrats on a really strong first season, Logan. I really appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Thank you.